Hey, Morningstar. Here we are in week two of our follow message series, learning how to move from religion to relationship, from our Christianity being based on following a list of rules and regulations to following a person, our Savior, Jesus. On Monday night at my small group, we had some great conversation about how this change in our paradigm is, is actually making such a huge effect on our day-to-day -day lives, you know, what it means to really show up and follow Jesus. And, and, and maybe the biggest effect is how we look at our time, because let's face it, we all wish we had more of that, right? Time and money. Another hour in our day, another day in every week, and then we'd be able to have that daily devotional time with God. We'd be able to take a true Sabbath and honor God once out of every seven days. At least that's what we tell ourselves. It sounds good, right? I'm not sure most of us would actually take that time and, and, and use it to make deposits in our spiritual bank accounts, but um, I guess it's actually not something we have to worry about, right? Because we don't have that extra time. Time isn't something that we can make or take. It's something that we have to invest and be intentional with. You know what? Truthfully, for most of us, following Jesus isn't about adding another item to our daily or weekly to-do list. Unless, of course, we're talking about making corporate worship, coming to church on, on the weekends, and making some individual devotional time a priority. I'm just going to assume that we can all agree on the importance of those activities, that they're foundational to what it means to have a relationship with God. Kind of like the, the Ten Commandments were like foundational guidelines for what marked the Israelites as God's distinct unique people in what we know as the Old Testament. But just like Moses and many subsequent Jewish teachers and scribes and Pharisees would add all sorts of other do's and don'ts to the qualifications for getting a favorable performance review from God, Christian religion, religion tends to do the same thing. But listen, Jesus didn't say, I have come to give you more commandments, more things to do, more things to avoid. He said, I come to give you life. Jesus didn't come to invite followers to add another thing to their lives. Instead, Jesus invites us, listen, to simply be intentional about the things we're already doing. And by intentional, I mean we're aware that, that God's presence is with us, living inside of us, and it, and it helps us live our lives as if Jesus were living our life. No, no, we don't live Jesus' life. Jesus doesn't invite us to live his life. I mean, that would be weird, right? Because of the cultural differences that separate us from Jesus and when he lived and walked here on earth. We're not going to be going around walking in a, in a robe and sandals and asking people to follow us. We're not living Jesus' life. Instead, followers get up every day and remember that Jesus is with us and Jesus equips us with the wisdom and strength to know and do uh, our life in such a way that will truly make the most of every opportunity. And by that, I mean uh, every act, every decision gives us an opportunity to honor God and bless others, which ultimately will bring joy and satisfaction to our lives. So listen, this week, let me challenge you. Let me challenge you to think about this question as often as possible. A very familiar saying, but man, friends, as simple as it is, it is a tremendous guideline for our life to simply ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? If Jesus were me at the gym, how would Jesus relate to the other people? If Jesus were deciding on how to spend my paycheck, what would Jesus do? If Jesus got just, just got yelled at by my spouse, how would Jesus respond? You see, Following Jesus really isn't about adding one more thing to your list of to-dos. Rather, it, it's cultivating an awareness, the awareness of Jesus' presence being with us, following his promptings and trusting that when we do, God will always be there with us and walk through whatever valleys and provide for our every need. Friends, that's my challenge. Wherever you go, whatever you're doing, Jesus is with you. In fact, he's already gone before you and is inviting you to follow him. So be the church this week, and I can't wait to be with you in worship. God bless you.